Good evening and welcome to NTD UK News. I'm Neil Woodrow. Here are today's top stories. UK media regulator revokes a Chinese state-owned TV channel's broadcasting license. Are vaccine passports really a good idea? Some experts are casting doubt. And cricket players in India are enjoying a tournament on snow. Britain's media regulator Ofcom revokes the broadcasting licence for a Chinese state-owned television channel. Ofcom concluded that China Global Television Network, or CGTN, was ultimately controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. Under UK law, licence holders cannot be controlled by political bodies. Ofcom previously ruled that CGTN, which broadcasts in English, repeatedly violated impartiality standards with its coverage of Hong Kong protests. The regulator adds that due to the seriousness of the breaches, CGTN could face sanctions. MPs are urging the government to act on China's human rights violations. It comes ahead of a vote on an amendment that could require the UK government to review any bilateral trade agreement with China. Entities Jane Werrell has more. China. There's cross-party pressure on the government to hold the Chinese Communist Party accountable for its human rights violations. Lawmakers are concerned about the disturbing reports of the abuse Uyghur Muslims face in Xinjiang detention camps. Will the minister make a promise today that no further deepening of any ties of any kind, deepening of any ties of any kind, will take place with China until a full judicial inquiry has investigated these crimes? Next week, the Commons will vote on legislation that seeks to prevent the UK from striking trade deals with countries the British courts find guilty of genocide. Why, oh why, is the government? going out of its way to block this amendment that's coming back to the House of Commons, which will give the courts the power to decide uh, that this is a genocide. He's just said in his statement that only the courts can say it is genocide. The minister says in his response the government will work together with him. Clear, We understand the strength of feeling, uh, and particularly around the trade bill. We do believe there must be more uh, enhanced scrutiny for Parliament on genocide. On the other side of the bench, Stephen Kinnock expresses the Labour Party support. This House has the chance to send a united message to the world that genocide can never be met with indifference, impunity or inaction. This should not be a partisan issue. The vote in the Commons on the genocide amendment to the Trade Bill is expected next Tuesday. Jane Wirral, NTD News, London. According to The Times, Manchester University cancels an agreement with a Chinese technology company. The report says China Electronics Technology Corporation, or CETC, supplies technology to the Xinjiang Public Security Bureau. Beijing security forces use the technology in identifying Uyghur Muslims for surveillance and persecution. Manchester University claims that it was unaware of CETC's involvement. A group of human rights activists are calling for a boycott of the 2022 Winter Olympics in Beijing. They say the Games would embolden Chinese regime's crackdowns in Tibet and Xinjiang. Entities Earl Rhodes with the details. The Beijing Games are due to open in exactly a year. But the International Olympics Committee is under pressure from critics of the Chinese regime's human rights record. I would like everyone to speak out together that... If China does not stop human rights, violations in Tibet and the neighboring region, China should not be allowed to host this 2022 Winter Olympic in Beijing. In an open letter to various governments, a coalition of 180 rights groups say that a boycott of the Games would ensure that they are not used to embolden the regime's appalling rights abuses and crackdowns on dissidents. In the past, the Berlin Olympic held in the capital of Germany under the Nazi regime strengthened the legitimacy of the Nazi. Seven U.S. senators are introducing a resolution seeking to remove the games from China. Activists are calling for the new administration in the U.S. and other countries to act in unison. China has for years routinely dismissed concerns from the West about its human rights record. Earl Rhodes, NTD News. The Myanmar military shuts down Facebook and messaging services, citing widespread fake news and misinformation and causing misunderstanding. 
It comes just days after they launched a coup and detained de facto leader Aung San Suu Kyi, saying it was a response to election fraud. In a statement, the country's mobile network operator Telenor says it had no choice but to comply. Opposition to the takeover went viral on Facebook, with activists and others sharing images of hospital staff protesting and calling for the release of Suu Kyi. Facebook is used by half of Myanmar's 53 million population. Governments and developers around the world are exploring the use of vaccine passports as a way of reopening the economy. But some are concerned with these social and political consequences. Earl Rhodes has more. Several countries have already signalled their interest in producing vaccine passports in some form, including Spain, Belgium, Iceland, Estonia and Denmark. In other countries, um, these sorts of certificates uh, are actually... Uh, being rolled out now. So, for example, in the United States, um, you're seeing private sector health passes being used. Anna Badushi, an associate law professor in the University of Exeter, says in her report that such tools raise questions on the protection of data privacy and human rights. She says if some people can't access or afford tests or vaccines, they won't be able to prove their health statuses and their freedoms will be restricted. Those developing the passports echo the same concerns. So I think there are huge social and political issues raised by vaccines, and it is the role, I think, of civil society and governments to discuss and debate. Biometrics company iProof and cybersecurity firm Mavin have built a vaccine pass, now being tested within Britain's National Health Service after receiving UK government funding. Earl Rhodes, NTD News. Two new surveys released this week shed a light on how Germans are coping with the lockdown and other restrictions. According to German pollster UNSA, 41% of respondents say the lockdown is pushing my physical and or psychological limits. Women, younger people, those less well off and minorities say to be more affected. This correlates with how Germans judge the government's response to the pandemic. For the first time since last year, most Germans, or 45%, say they are not satisfied with it. A veterinary clinic in Germany trains dogs to sniff out people infected with the CCP virus. In the near future, they may sniff you out before you cross the German border. Joanna Conway has the details. A veterinary clinic in Germany has successfully trained dogs to sniff out people who are infected with the CCP virus. After one week of training, they can detect saliva samples with the virus at a 94% accuracy. That's according to research led by a university in Hanover. So dogs can really sniff out people with infections and without infections, as well as asymptomatic and symptomatic COVID patients. Sniffer dogs are known to be able to detect not only explosives and drugs, but also cancer and diabetic hypoglycemia. Filou, a three-year-old Belgian shepherd, and Joe Cocker, a one-year-old Cocker Spaniel, are two of the dogs being trained. The head of the study explains how it works. It's not the virus sending out the odour, but when the virus infects the cell, the metabolism changes and the cell releases different substances compared to a healthy cell. And this is very virus specific. And these release substances of the cell, that is what the dog can smell and show us. The governor of Lower Saxony was impressed with the result. He said it is conceivable to utilise virus sniffing dogs at airports, border checkpoints and even restaurants. Trevor Piper, NTD News. In France, a growing number of doctors dispute the efficacy of lockdowns. Entities France correspondent David Vivez spoke with a lawyer of a French microbiologist who says lockdowns are killing lives. Following three days of violent protests in the Netherlands at the end of January, the French government is reconsidering its planned lockdown measures. Former French interior minister Christopher Castaner warned that another national lockdown could also lead to civil disobedience in the country. In France, like many countries, the government imposed lockdowns in effort to suppress the virus. But French microbiologist Didier Raoult said it has no effect, and he spoke with his lawyer, Fabrizio Di Vigio. We don't know if the lockdown ever saved a life, but we know for sure that people are dying from it. Is there any balance between benefit and risk in that case? The French Prime Minister says the number of new cases in France increased to over 26,000 on February 3rd. 
the new British variant makes up more than 14% of the cases. A January 6th study from Stanford University says there is no clear positive effect of mandatory closures and stay-at-home measure. According to Davidio, there is a pro-lockdown bias in the media. Bars, restaurants, sports spaces, theatres, everything is closed. So how do people contaminate each other? How do they contaminate? It seems no one cares. And still there are doctors saying we need lockdown. This is all about narrative from the media. The French Prime Minister announced on Thursday that there won't be another national lockdown unless he's left with no other choice. David Vives, NTD News, Paris. Britons are drinking more wines from Australia during the pandemic and before Brexit. The UK is now Australia's biggest export market in terms of volume. According to a report by the trade body Wine Australia, in the year to December 2020, the UK imported 266 million litres of Australian wine, up 19%, making it the number one destination in the world. The study says the strong growth started at the advent of the pandemic due to the increased demand and was boosted in the months leading up to Brexit. The surge of UK demand helps Australia offset a slump in sales to China after the country imposed heavy tax tariffs on Australian wine last November. The UK's central bank confirms that they need at least six months to prepare for any cut in interest rates below zero. The basic rate is unchanged at 0.1%. Bank of England's Monetary Policy Committee says it doesn't want to send a signal that it intends to set a negative rate, but it would be appropriate to start the preparations, just in case it's needed in the future. The pound jumps by more than half a cent against the US dollar, and British government bond yields climb as investors scale back their bets on negative rates in the near future. For the first time since Iran's 1979 revolution, an official is sentenced to 20 years in prison by a Belgian court. Asadullah Asadi, a Vienna-based diplomat, is convicted of masterminding a 2018 bomb attack in France. The Iranian state is considered responsible. It's not the cause, but it's responsible for its services. Asadi did not attend the hearing and Tehran has denied any involvement. The conviction comes at a time when Iran is expecting the new US administration to lift the economic sanctions and unconditionally join the 2015 nuclear deal between Tehran and world powers. A group of clams have been tasked with an important mission in Poland, guarding the purity of capital Warsaw's drinking water. Eddie Aitken tells us more. The mollusks live in a special tank that is fed water directly from the river. The clams are connected to sensors. If the clams detect toxins, they close their shells. If six of the eight close for over four seconds, an alarm is triggered. This scientist says that they have noticed that the clams have differing personalities. We absolutely treat them as living beings because they cooperate with us. They give us very important information. Staff say that because of their connection, they care deeply for the clams and they're constantly checking, watching and cleaning their aquarium. After three months, these clams return to their natural environment, so they regain their freedom and their place is taken by new ones. The clams can detect pesticides, heavy metals and other toxins and do it very well. Warsaw's river Vistula supplies drinking water to the city's almost 1.8 million people. Eddie Aitken, NTD News. A cricket tournament on snow was organised in North India on Wednesday. Joy Duguid brings us more. Organised by the Super 7 Cricket Association, many young players who are usually forced to sit at home due to the harsh winters took part in the tournament. This is a very big thing. We used to sit at home or we had to go to Jammu for playing. So when the snow cricket started over here, we did not sit at home this winter. So it was a very good tournament and we enjoyed it a lot. Held in India's northern Srinagar city, the tournament gave them an opportunity to come out and showcase their skills. The game is for limited hours. It gets over soon and one doesn't feel the cold. We haven't organized a match of 20 or 50 hours, but only 7 hours. We'll get many new ideas because of this, and tourism will also increase. Kashmir is considered one of the most popular tourist destinations in India. Once dubbed the Switzerland of the East, Kashmir was heaven for skiers, honeymooners and filmmakers. 
Joy Duguid, NTD News. Releasing ornamental carp into the river to pray for a good year, Vietnam kicks off preparations for the Lunar New Year Festival. NTD's Trevor Piper has the story. The tradition of releasing carp stems from the fable of the three kitchen gods. The story says they ride on the back of a carp before noon to meet a jade emperor, to whom they report the affairs of each household. Releasing the fish back to the lake symbolizes that we can appreciate life, have a merciful soul and know how to love each other. This activity says the Vietnamese are a peaceful people. Because of the pandemic, many people are praying for good health in the new year. I wish to have good health first of all. Have good health and you'll have the rest. I release the fish today for the health and well-being of my family. One Hanoi resident says this year the streets are much less crowded because people either are abiding by the rules or worried about the virus. This year my family members also wanted to come but they were afraid. Vietnamese officials have taken extra precautions after a recent outbreak was of the more contagious variant first detected in Britain. Trevor Piper, NTD News. That's all for now. See you tomorrow.